Hello fellow Commodore fans. Today I'm going to be doing a few improvements to a Breadbox Commodore 64. Uh, so I picked up this Commodore 64 a couple of years ago for $5 at a yard sale and since powering it on I've discovered that the SID chip in it is dead. But other than that, I mean the case is in immaculate condition. Um, it's even if we, we flip it over and we, we notice we have a refurbished by Commodore sticker on the back, um, imprinted on the back. Um, the warranty seals were intact from the, from the refurbished company. But um, yeah, so the SID chip is dead, so we have the, the original SIDs in that. Uh, over here I picked up another Commodore 64 that, uh, at a flea market, which is dead. It looks like the Vic is uh, the fried, the screen is all garbled. Um, so I'm going to be taking the SID from this and uh, replacing it into my working machine. On top of that, um, I would like to I'd like to use this machine as a BBS, so it's going to be running for extended periods of time. So to enable that and not put any stress on the on the older hardware, I would like to try and dissipate the heat somehow. So I'm going to be adding a few heat sinks to some key components in it that generate a lot of heat. So I have a number of these uh, Raspberry Pi heat sinks that I will I will place on the chips. And on top of that, I'm going to also be adding a fan, a solder a fan onto a 12 volt rail to just to add a little bit of extra heat dissipation. Additionally, I have a Jiffy DOS kernel ROM here just to add a few, uh, a few extra drive controls, drive commands. And uh, lastly, um, after all that is complete, I have my UIEC drive here that I will be using for, as the, the primary storage for the machine. Now if we put these two machines side by side, we have the, the old, uh, we have the non-working Commodore 64 on this side and the machine which is going to be hosting the BBS on this side, the, the mint condition refurbished one. Um, they're both revision B boards but we can notice a few differences between them. Uh, on this machine we have a lot more socketed chips. We have the, the basic kernel and the character uh, ROMs all over here. They're all socketed, whereas they're not. They're, uh, they're all mounted, surface mounted on this board. Um, also the SID chip, fortunately the SID chip, which we should be replacing, taking from this machine and placing it here, that is uh, socketed. Uh, and the PLA. The PLA is a, another chip which is common to go. Um, that, is, that is also socketed. Uh, is it really interesting to note that since this was a refurbished machine, and uh, it it was this machine it had its warranty seal still intact. The the refurbishing company omitted the um, the shield that went across the top of the Vic chip, which acted as a as a heat sink for this chip. Um, that doesn't matter quite so much in our case since we're going to be um, replacing uh, extra um, heat sinks and fans on top of this to to alleviate any heat problems. But it's interesting to see that they omitted that. So let's start the process by pulling out the SID from the non-working Commodore. Uh, using the chip ex extractor, I'm going to gently pry out one SID. And moving over to the other machine. I'm going to very gently rock out the non-working SID. Okay. Now noticing the notch on the chip facing to the back of the board. Let's pop this one in. Okay, now that we have that in, I'm going to go take this machine over and uh, fire up a game, see if I can get some sound coming from it. I'm going to clean up a few of these, these chips with some, some paper towel, get some of this old uh, thermal paste off of the Vic chip here. That's pretty gross.
So next up, I'm going to start mounting a few of these heat sinks. So towards the center of the, the heat sink where we see the we see the lettering, that's going to be the hottest part. So we're going to we're going to try and mount a few chips. Let's get them in place first. Mount a few chips and position them up. See what we can cover. All right, next up we're going to be uh, getting ready to mount a fan onto the top of the VIC. So first of all, we've taken a look at, we've got, the, we've got two voltage regulators here, and I looked up the 781 2CV voltage regulator. I looked up the data sheet, and this is the, the 12 volt uh, supply to the machine. And uh, it's a 1.5 amp, 12 volts, and the pin output it goes from input ground to um, to output and so we're looking at the we have a ground rail a shared ground rail so I think ultimately what I would like to do is attach the the positive line to the to the to the output directly on the on the voltage regulator before it starts hitting any of these capacitors which would smooths out the signal I, I think that my theory is that will have less interference with uh, any of the other any of the timings and signals that's going on in the machine. So uh, so let's test this out. So I've got my handy dandy power saver here from Ray Carlson to prevent over voltages. So let's, let's tap the tap the ground. Hit the output, and it gives us uh, 11.96. That gives us our 12 volt supply right there. First up, we've got to tin the positive line. Now my as I've mentioned elsewhere, my soldering skills are, I wheel, are pretty abysmal. I, I tend to wield a soldering iron like a lightsaber, as I've said. This means my accuracy is about as good as using a lightsaber. Okay, let's, uh, let's power this on and if all has gone well, we should have the fan kicking on, the power goes on. Indeed we do. We're going to put a couple of daubs of hot glue. Moment of truth. Let's see if everything is still working. Everything's looking good. I'm not seeing any interference. And it's noticeably more noisy though.
Looking and sounding good. The last project we're going to be tackling on the inside of this machine is installing the Jiffy DOS kernel ROM. So first of all we're going to need to extract the old one. So of this bank of three it's our middle chip. Gently pry out the old one. Oh yeah. So we have the we have the switch for the for the ROM here. It's recommended in the manual, and I've seen other people they they drill a hole in the side of the case, and then mount the switch on the side of the Commodore. I'm of two minds doing that. This is this is such a a clean machine. I don't. I feel bad drilling holes into such a good looking machine. So I think for now, I'm going to try and, and slot this outside, have it sit thicken outside the, uh, go through one of the, the user ports or the tape port going to the outside the machine. So anyway, let's get this. Notice how the notch is facing to the back of the machine. And very gently. Very gently, he says. There we go. That's definitely a snug fit. Okay. Yeah, just squeeze through to the outside. I, I, I can't I can't bring myself to drill a hole in this machine. So I've come up with an alternate solution to I didn't like the drilling solution to mounting the, the switch and I didn't really want to leave it dangling around to the outside of the machine with the potential of it snagging um, and shorting out on uh, on one of the on one of the ports. So I've uh, I've taken to hot gluing to the outside of the case. Um, I tested the hot glue on the other case, on the old case, to make sure that it didn't do any damage. And um, yeah, everything seems fine. It seems like it's this is a good workable solution. Not the prettiest, but the least invasive. Thanks for joining me on this journey while I've gotten this C64 ready for its next role as a BDS server. These were some simple changes but the results should help any Commodore 64 last a few extra years. Thanks for watching and have a great day!